She said, Mommy, are you doing work in there? Doing work in where? In here? We're going outside today. Video because I wanted to give y'all an update of how things are going since we've been doing homeschool for how long now? Um, four weeks. Uh, four weeks? You know what? It almost has been four weeks. You might be right. I have to do the math. But I think we're almost a month in to homeschool since my last homeschool video where I got so many encouraging comments from some OG homeschoolers, okay? Especially. I got a lot of comments from everybody all around, but like the comments from the OG homeschoolers with the tips and the encouragement, like y'all are the real ones because I needed those comments. I've learned so much even in the past month of doing this. And we've switched some things up since that day one of homeschool. So I'm gonna take us through our usual morning routine, morning songs and things like that. And then also I've got a special activity planned for the kids, for Micah and Sarai, the two oldest ones today. That yeah, I think they're really I'm gonna really enjoy. the oldest. You're the oldest. Well, technically Ari is the oldest, but she doesn't live with us, she lives with her mom in New York. But you're the oldest in the house. Yeah. And I got new pants. You got new pants. And new shoes. And new shoes. Ready to do homeschool? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Say, come on, y'all. Come on, yeah. <laughs> come here. Yeah. So while my husband gets breakfast taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and pack up my little bag to take outside for our homeschool day. And truly, I didn't really know how this was gonna go at this point. So I just packed everything that I usually use with the kids every day, which is a couple cards that have letters and prayers on them, plus a couple books, their actual curriculum books, and some art supplies like scissors and glue and markers, just in case. This is what I wish I would have known before we started homeschooling. Nobody told me how much fun it was gonna be. Truly did not expect to have this much fun with my own kids. The day-to-day -day activities that we do, just singing and dancing with them every day while also learning letters and numbers and all the things is just so much fun because it's so simple. It's so not serious. And it's a bit freeing because it's actually very stressful to be an adult, okay? We all know this. And these moments that I have with my kids where we're just singing songs about numbers and pretending to eat apples to learn about the letter A brings me a level of freedom and peace that I was not expecting. I also love that we don't have to answer to anybody. Literally nobody. We live in Texas, so this is like... I don't even have to talk to nobody at the state or nothing. You can literally do whatever you wanna do with your kids in this state because here, technically, when you homeschool, you're considered a private school. So you get all the benefits and privileges that a private school gets, which can feel like a big responsibility because there's nobody holding you accountable or holding you to like these standards. So it can feel like a lot, but at the same time, what I was so worried about before homeschooling, which was like, how am I going to keep my kids academically progressing and like, you know, learning the things that they're supposed to learn and like, am I going to be able to give them the quality of education that they need and all these things? And what I'm realizing almost a month into our journey is that my kids are smart, okay? And it's not just them being smart. It is they retain information so well when it's given to them in a fun way. And what I've learned using our curriculum from the good and the beautiful is that a lot of things are layered. So as long as you're hitting language and math at the same time, but instead of just verbally saying back and forth how to spell this or how to say that, I'll have Sarai just write stuff out, copy. So she's 
practicing her handwriting while also using like colorful pencils and then I'll let her draw something. And so in kind of incorporating multiple things helps the kids really hold on to the information. And also I really am enjoying the fact that yes, I use a curriculum, but if and when I want to add on to their learning experience, so different subjects like science or history or even like Bible study, things like that, I can do whatever I want to do. And now that I'm getting into a groove, I know I'm going to build up on that part of stuff because I'm getting like a rhythm to how the kids like to learn and also like what works best for me and finding that happy medium. So I know as we grow and we continue on this journey, I'll definitely be adding like supplemental things to our curriculum. But the good and the beautiful is a great baseline for us so that even if I don't add nothing else this year, I know that they're gonna get all of what they actually need at this age level just from the good and the beautiful curriculum. Also, I wish I knew that there really was no track that you have to stay on with homeschool. Like with grades and different milestones and things like that, you do not have to abide by anybody else's rules. Obviously, you want to make sure that your kids are progressing and they're learning and things like that, but your child is unique. And what I'm learning is that my children all have different needs, different interests, and I don't want to hold some of them back or push too hard just because I'm trying to keep them all in this same pathway or using the curriculum as a baseline and like sticking to it, like married to it. We're not married to our curriculum. We are dating our curriculum, okay? We actually have taken a break for the past week or so with language arts for Sarai because there's these, so let me see, do I have my bag? Okay, let me show y'all. So for example, we have these reading booster books and they're called booster cards. They go with the language arts curriculum. We got stuck for a good two weeks. And so that was longer than what it was taking us to get through these worksheets. So we hit a point where we had to pause on our language arts lessons because we want to be on reader booster card three to be on this language arts lesson. But we weren't there by the time we went through these. We were still on part one by the time we got to this place. So we actually spent a week and a half or so just on these two cards, this one and this one to get her all caught up. Because low key, I feel like my daughter Sarai, who's five, may have dyslexia, but I'm not letting that hinder me or make me feel any type of ways or whatever. I'm just noticing little things about how she writes sometimes that I'm like, hmm, okay, let's just like make a mental note and slow down on these parts. Obviously, if she's still struggling in the future, I'll, you know, go into it deeper. But right now, it's not that she doesn't get it. It's that it just takes her a little bit longer. And so that's the beautiful thing about homeschool is that like I can take that time with her. I can say, hey, we can pause here and just like really settle into these sight words, these little words that we need to learn how to blend and learn how to recognize letters quickly and like read them and like start those foundational reading skills because that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to a reading, not just a reading level that's, you know, basic, but I want her to excel at reading. I want her to really enjoy reading. And so if that means that we have to take a slower pace than maybe others, then totally cool. We can do that. That's the beauty of homeschool. So I'm getting everything set up and I wanted to just give y'all a real picture of how it feels out here right now. Like we've got such great sun. There is not a cloud in the sky. It is a solid like 75 with like a cool breeze. I'm so thankful that it is like the perfect morning to be doing homeschool outside for the first time together. And I know the kids are going to just absolutely love it out here today. Sit on the grass, sit on the grass, sit on the grass, hey, 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 hey. Sit on the grass, sit on the grass, sit on the grass, hey, 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 hey. Okay, you wanna take your shoes off? Let's take your shoes off. Everybody has their shoes off, right? It's okay, I'm gonna put them right here. Are you wanting to keep them on? Okay, you can keep them on, MJ. I'm sorry, here, you put them back on. Can I take my socks off? Sure. If 
feels good out here, right? It's too hot out here. You can if you want. When we believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Be oh, I'm so good, strawberry. But because, because we have the Holy Spirit, we're able to live in a way that is pleasing to God. You see the strawberry? Yummy, yummy. The Holy Spirit gives us the ability to produce good qualities that without Him, we couldn't produce. In Him, we bear His fruit. I also have to say that homeschool has allowed me to really embrace this spirit of taking our time. We don't have to rush anywhere. And that is such a foreign experience in this day and age. And I'm just like, so here for it. And speaking of taking our time, these kids learn quick, but if they're frustrated, it's okay to stop. Like, it is very much so okay to take a pause or take a day to just like let it be what it is because sometimes we're the same way. We wake up on the wrong side of the bed. We don't feel like it. We don't this, we don't that. And there were actually a few times in the past few weeks where Sarai needed a day. <laughs> Micah needed a day. I needed a day. Like last week, I was really, really feeling heavy and just stressed and it was like raining outside and I just like did not have it in me to do homeschool. And my husband had a great idea. He said, you know what? Let's all just go on a family walk in the rain. It was like trickling. So it was not super wet, but it was still drizzling a little bit. The kids put on their boots and we went off into our neighborhood and took a really nice walk and we sat around this pond that's in our neighborhood and just let the kids play and just get it in the dirt and just do their thing out there. And that was what we considered homeschool that day. Even though for me, it was like, ain't no singing, ain't no doing no letters, ain't no nothing. But they were out in nature still learning and growing. And that was good for that day. And so that was such a relief because I was just like, man, I, even in my mindset of be open okay to whatever however this goes there were still moments where I was stressing myself out or it wasn't even homeschool that was stressing me out it's like other life things stressing me out and sometimes it's hard to show up fully when you've got so much on your mind and that's what I appreciate too is like for homeschool, it's not just about catering to the kids' needs, but it's also about catering to my needs, my husband's needs, our family needs. Sometimes we just need to like have a break in the routine and just like get out of our normalcy. And we're able to do that so easily in our homeschool journey. Also, I wish somebody would have told me how many hugs and kisses and high fives I was going to get as a homeschool mom, okay? Like, we are constantly affirming, celebrating each other for these little wins. When we answer the question right, when we start to dance and sing, when we need a little bit of encouragement, if something is a little challenging, we are constantly giving each other high fives. We're constantly giving each other kisses and hugs. And I just love that that is going to be synonymous with my children's learning experience instead of like me being in a very like, I grew up a military kid. I was always in some sort of very structured environment. And while I would have loved to be with my parents more and my parents would have loved to be with me more, like that wasn't an option for us. So I was always with other adults who could not hug me, could not kiss me, obviously. It <laughs> could not be all of those things. They may have given me a high five and maybe a little hug here and there, but you know, like you can't do too much of that in a public setting. So to be able to create in a, a learning environment where I'm giving the biggest hugs and the biggest kisses and the biggest high fives to my kids when they do something correct is just so rewarding. Now, I know a lot of this has been positive, but I'm going to tell you one thing that's been a little bit challenging, maybe a little bit more than challenging, but the distractions, okay? This is something for me as a mom of four that I deal with a lot, okay? Because if you only have one child at home homeschooling, this is not necessarily going to be the case for you. But when you're homeschooling multiple or have a baby on your hip and you're homeschooling another baby, like it's a lot. And those moments where... I'm trying to do something with 
one or two of the kids and then the other one is acting up or uh, am I, I need to nurse my newborn. Well, she's not a newborn anymore. She's a baby now. We are four months old now. Um, but when I'm having to juggle all of them, it's it can get really difficult. And especially if I'm like trying to concentrate on something, especially like academically with the kids or just with one of them and the other one, I just like, I can't. So luckily my husband is at home and he is able to take a kid or a couple kids out when needed because we all work together to make homeschool work. And so my husband is so supportive and he's just always there whenever I need him to move something, to get a kid, to take somebody to the potty, like whatever I need to make sure that the homeschool goal is met for the day like my husband is there helping me get it done but I have figured out ways to manage the distractions okay first off I gotta breathe okay first off I have to breathe and remember that those moments go by quick like usually realistically a distracting moment may last a few seconds or a few minutes, but it's not going to last all day, even though your brain will, will tell you that it's going to last forever. <laughs> it actually doesn't last forever. It only usually lasts for a few minutes and get help. Like for me, I have to tap my husband. I have my sister who lives with us as well and she helps too. So it's like I am very much so quick to tell somebody to come help because I need to like refocus and that, that's enough. It, it doesn't take much to just redirect and take a breath and start on the next thing or get back to what we were doing. But at the end of it all, I think I wish I would have known that I was capable before I started homeschooling. Like I really wish I would have known how capable I was and how much I was going to thoroughly enjoy doing this and thoroughly enjoy spending time with my kids and how much I was going to be able to trust myself, like truly trust myself and my intuition and my understanding and my discernment to figure out what my child needs in every moment. And when I don't know what to do, that I can just ask the Father, I can ask the Holy Spirit, like, help me in this moment. Because listen, I don't do this by myself. Yes, I have support from my husband and my sister, like I said, but like, truly, this is me and God, okay? Because it's a lot. Like, let's not get it twisted, okay? This is a lot, all right? It's a lot, okay? Let's, let's not ignore that, right? But one of the things that I'm so grateful for is that I've done the work, I've done the spiritual maturing in my life up until this point to be at a place where I can easily tap in with God and be like, hey, okay, I'm I'm at my edge. I'm at the end of my rope. I need you to tap in, Lord. I need Holy Spirit, fruits of the Spirit. Come on, like, come on, like we read in the book today, fruits of the Spirit, peace, love, joy, faithfulness, gentleness, kindness, self-control, okay? Like I needed all those things. I need all those things every day with my kids, especially during homeschool, but just every day in general, right? And I'll tell you one more story before I leave y'all today. The other day, it was another rainy morning and I got the kids inside. We sang our sit on the grass song and I could just tell that like they were restless, they were just kind of jittery, they were already kind of fighting with each other in the morning, everybody was kind of frustrated slash like just like whiny that morning and usually we like do all these songs, I have a playlist that we go through and all these things, we get up and we dance, we jump and we get all excited and stuff right in the morning but this morning it just felt like we needed to do the opposite. It felt like we needed to just like breathe for a second, like collectively, like we needed to address like how we were feeling. And so I'm sitting on the, on the, on the grass. I keep saying grass, but it's our rug because it's a green rug and it says wet grass on it. And we sing a song that starts our homeschool day called sit on the grass. So we sit on the grass and I grab their hands. It's me, my three-year-old, my five-year-old and my almost two-year-old at this point. And I asked them how they feel. And my daughter was like, I'm mad. And I said, I'm mad too. I'm frustrated. I said, Micah, how do you feel? My three-year-old. And he was like, I'm mad. Because he, they were, everybody was on one that morning. And I cut on this 
music. It's called soaking music. I don't know if y'all have heard of this. If you're in the churchy world, you've heard of soaking music, but it's like soaking in the Holy Spirit or like music that they play at churches or like when you're reading and you want something like very like get you in kind of your like zone of prayer and stuff like that. And so I put on this soaking music and it was real gentle and and um, I started just praying with them and we took some deep breaths together and we just did everything very calmly that day. There was no songs, singing, jumping, dancing. There was none of that. We just sat on the rug and relaxed. Sometimes you just need to relax. Sometimes you just need to rest and just say, we're gonna do something different today. We're gonna like get out of our mold, which is another reason why we did homeschool outdoors today was because it was a beautiful morning. It was a gorgeous morning. And I just felt like we needed to like switch it up. And that was one thing when I was going to school growing up that I wished we did school outside. I don't know, just something about it just like feels so good. So yeah, so those are the things that I wish I would have known before homeschooling because if I would have known all of that, I probably would have been down to homeschool way quicker and earlier than I have been. And I wouldn't have fought it for so long. So maybe you're watching this video and you've been contemplating on whether or not you wanna start homeschooling. I hope this video helps you feel like it is totally doable and it's not just doable, but it's something that is truly going to be such a beautiful experience for you and your family. Out of Do you love homeschool? Yes. <laughs> go Rara, go Rara, go Rara, go, go, go Rara, go Rara, go Rara, go, go, a, a, a. Oh, hey, go Sarah. Oh, hey, go Sarah. Hey, hey, hey.